you see people publishing videos saying we're living off grid. <laughs> if you were living off grid, you wouldn't be publishing videos because you don't have the internet connection right. or a phone or a computer to do that. Well, good morning. I suppose we need some kind of introduction as to what we're up to. Uh, so we popped into the marina, we've got to do some paperwork, but uh, we've been told that we can go off for a week and just relax, and that's exactly what we're going to do. It's a beautiful morning. We've got some sh quite strong northeasterlies uh, set in for this week, but they tend to be further offshore. We're hoping that uh, if we don't have wind, that the sea state won't be too lumpy. So Lisa's setting up the rods. I think at the moment, if she were to put the line out, all she'd catch is lots of plastic bottles, because as usual, around this area, Lots and lots of plastic, unfortunately. Same old story. Oh! Avocado, avocado on toast! Yes, it's not the best avocado. It's hard in places and soft in other places, so I mashed it. I added avocado oil, some of Craig's pepper and some Himalayan salt. Right, I've had my avocado on toast. Worth noting that that avocado on toast we just had was on Liz's homemade bread. Made it in the bread oven, but it's a really good loaf of bread, lots of seeds and uh, things. And we had Craig's pepper. Now, you remember Craig, he was the, he's the British guy getting married this week to a local girl, Josephine. Uh, we met him on Balambangan and the other week he came down and gave us a little sachet of homemade pepper from Balambangan. So peppers that were grown on Balambangan and he dried them and crushed them up to make uh, black pepper. And it's really, really tasty. So it's always a joy to have homemade food on the boat. Oh, it's wonderful being back on the water again, sailing, fishing, catching our own food, eating homemade bread with homegrown pepper on top. Isn't it great living off grid? Oh God, <laughs> right. Okay, so you started it and I will continue because off grid is the buzzword of the moment and it's really irritating me. I don't know if it's irritating you, but it's irritating me and I was irritating I said it because I knew it's a trigger word. Yeah, yeah, it is. So well, I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to explain, try and understand why off grid which used to be called off the grid, but it's now more media friendly and a bit more sexy to call it off grid. I don't think that off grid is what we do on the boat. All right, so what is the definition then of off grid or off the grid? Well, that's really interesting because I got so wound up about it that I looked it up on the internet. Well, be prepared for a <laughs> rant here. This is one of Lizzie's rants. <laughs> nothing else to do other than to rant about some mad thing called off-grid well anyway I looked it up and there is not one definition for off-grid right. even the dictionaries have different explanations and definitions of off the grid or off-grid and I reckon that there is a kind of sliding scale from just turning your lights off and not using electricity right up to Into the Wild, that film, do you remember? Yeah, where he yeah. goes up Great and he film. Goes, lives in the wild with nothing. So there's a sliding st scale from one end to the other. You've got this sliding scale that yeah. you've in invented. <laughs> it could become a standard. Right, but you're right, a lot of, especially sailing channels, are out there proclaiming that they're living off grid. Yeah. Uh, and I, I do get what you mean because really we're not living off grid are we i mean where, I where do we so. fall on your sliding scale i think that maybe for one or two weeks or even maybe a couple of months we might yep. be off grid but of course if we're using our phones navionics um getting on the internet then that's not off grid mm. is it so if you were really off grid you wouldn't know about it because mm. you wouldn't be able to do any of this mm. i'll come up with five definitions from once from the soft end to the hard end and uh I'll give them to you and you mm. tell me if you think we fit into any of them. Right. Okay, at the soft end then is number one, unplugged. 
That is the original definition of living off the grid and it meant basically that you were no longer plugged in to the electrical supply. You could add in water, you can add in gas, but originally it just meant off the grid, no longer doing that, doing it yourself. So basically when we go out to sea and then when we're at anchor, we, we're off grid by that definition. Yeah, we are because we're using solar power, we are making our own water. But uh, even if you're a weekend cruiser or perhaps you've chartered a boat, you're still off-grid for that period, aren't you? Yeah, and if you go out of your house and you walk in the park, you're off-grid for that period. If you go camping That's in the true. hills, you're yeah. off-grid. Yeah. Go on a camping weekend, you're off-grid. Mm. So a lot of the time, a lot of us mere mortals are living off the grid. However, I would agree that on a boat, we are off the grid under that definition quite a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. But we're not off the grid when we're, when we're in a marina. Yeah. Don't convince me, convince <laughs> them. Yeah, well I suppose you still can be because you don't use the marina fuel or the food or, or the uh, electricity but why are you in a marina if you don't need those things, don't know really. We're in the marina right now because poor old Liz has had to go to hospital and she's yeah. had various bits of her skin gouged out. Um, <laughs> so that's why we're in the marina. So yeah. uh, obviously when we're in the marina we don't need to plug in that much because we've got solar. Yeah. Uh, but we are really here because it's easy, ease of access to uh, the, yeah. the hospital for example and there we go there's another example we're not off grid yeah. there we're having to use facilities no. ashore exactly and also perhaps on the hard stand you're usually plugged in there and you're using tools that involve electricity mm -hmm. and what about all the travel you know yeah i mean going into town mm -hmm. if it's to buy supplies for the boat then perhaps you're using local transport services yeah. Uh, so yeah definitely not off grid there To be off-grid, in my mind, you've got to have no phone, no connection to the internet, no connection to satellite comms, really, no connection to the outside world other than through semaphore, maybe, <laughs> smoke signals, just talking, yep. flags on your boat, yep. yeah, lights. Yeah, so that would be the first thing. Of course, we don't know any cruisers like that, and in fact, none of you guys do watching this because if they were doing that, they wouldn't be publishing on YouTube. All right. Good point. What's your answer to that then? I think you hit the nail on the head there. And, uh, and I think that's where a lot of the frustration comes from is that you see people publishing videos saying we're living off grid. <laughs> if you were living off grid, you wouldn't be publishing videos because you don't have the internet connection right. or a phone or a computer to do that. So yeah. stop lying. <laughs> it's not just sailing ship. It's all, it's it's, all kinds uh, of things. Yes. People yeah. who are RVing and stuff like that. It's generally, it's just pissed off about it. Yes. Right, so number three, <laughs> and bear in mind, I think it might start raining here. We're yep. contending with some difficult trying uh, Natural filming. Natural conditions. Yes. <laughs> We've got a creaking pontoon here. It's about to rain and there's an aeroplane going over. So quickly, number three, Liz. Okay, I'll just have a look at my phone because I might make sure I get the right See, order. See, she's not living off grid <laughs> because she has to use her phone. is hunter-gatherers which is of course what we were way back in the very very distant past humans were hunter-gatherers and there are people now who like to call themselves hunter-gatherers and some of them are I'm not saying everyone's lying some people are they we are yeah we, we, we fish we fish we yeah. hunt we gather but real hunter-gatherers real people who are out there homesteading they're they're farming themselves they're going out into the wild and shooting animals to eat that's hunter-gathering and I would suggest that most yachts are not hunter-gatherers. We do a lot of hunter-shopping around <laughs> and we do a little bit of fishing around again but on the, on the whole we're not building um, farms, uh, uh, rearing animals, killing animals on the whole apart from fish and we don't have anything growing on the boat very often. No, apart from mould yeah. and a general sense of despise and <laughs> anger at each other. Where do people who claim that they only use recycled products and perhaps only buy organic, organic, organic foods yeah. and what have you, I yeah. suppose, you know, you still have to get to the market, you maybe have to source your organic foods yeah. and use recycled materials, but there's yeah. still transportation involved. Yes. And, yeah. yes, so I'm not knocking that, I'm just saying it's not called off-grid. I'm, I'm saying it's something, it's more like simple living 
or sustainable living. Sustainable. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's really good. For me, personally, I think sustainable living is something we try to do as much as we can. Yep. But we don't call it sexy off-grid living. Okay? Nothing sexy about us. <laughs> By the way, while she does this, I should just say thank you very much to everyone who came back to us on suggestions for video subjects, topics. Uh, really appreciate that. We've taken a lot of them on board. I should just say quite a few of you suggested topics that we have already covered. I guess you're fairly new to the channel, so check out our playlist on our YouTube channel and you should see a lot of the topics that you've requested we have already covered up. Yeah. Right, number four. You don't have any money because you don't have any income. You've got no bank. You've got unless you've got a big chest of notes somewhere. You don't have money, so you can't buy goods. You can't buy supplies. Obviously, you can't buy food. You'd be doing that. You'd be because you're growing it yourself anyway. It doesn't matter. But you wouldn't be able to go to hospital, see a doctor, see a dentist, do any of those things. You have to be utterly self-sufficient. The only thing you could do, which is what the Bajau lout do, and that is barter. Barter. Yes. Mm. Well. Uh, Cruisers, we barter, don't we? Yeah, we, we, do. we swap things, not just with the locals, but with each other as well. We barter our skills. Yeah. You are living completely without anyone knowing anything about you, and it means you've got no land, you've got no job, no insurance number, no bank, no tax returns, no bills. No income tax, no VAT. No voting rights, no passport, etc. You have made the decision to leave society altogether and have nothing to do with the rest of us and you've turned your back on everybody and everything. Yeah, I don't think we know any cruisers like that. You, no. you, you can't because it means you can't travel in between uh, countries, you can't go through immigration if you don't have a passport. And I suppose the only people we've met really are the Bajau Laut, the sea gypsies, who we met last yeah. year when we cruised down the east coast of Sabah. And of course there are many here as well. Yeah. Uh, those people, and it's kind of by choice, but it is also by a kind of historical, political division yeah. that they are pretty much well and truly off grid. Although I have to say, a few of them did have phones. Yeah, I mean, they're undocumented, so they don't exist according to Malaysia. They don't actually exist. That's kind of what you mean. Mm. Uh, and they aren't allowed to go anywhere. So if you're prepared to do that, and you're prepared to sit in a boat and not go anywhere, not get stopped by anyone, it could be the police or harbour, yeah. you know, all but, of that, but, you'd but, have no papers. But even if you bought a boat, you've got to register the boat. Yeah. If you do it officially, of course, that boat's yeah. got to be registered in a particular country. Yeah. So unless you built your boat on a desert island out of wood and uh, sailed off somewhere without that paperwork, there's no way, I don't think, any boat owner can fall into this category. No, I don't think so. I think it's more easy to do it on land because you could go to, so there are still wildernesses in the world where people don't own land and you can get right into that wilderness. Where do we fall on this sliding scale? I have my opinion and my opinion is that we don't even fit on the first bit of it. Maybe we do for a few weeks now and again, but I would say we don't live off grid. We really don't live off grid properly in the true sense of the word. For me, living off grid is really, really living away from it all. Into the Wild, Jeremiah Johnson, two films where two guys live off grid. That to me is living off grid and I don't think we do that. Hmm. Okay. Well, I like to dream. I like to think that when we're at anchor, we are complete, and we are completely independent. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we make our own water, we make our own electricity, but of course that is dependent upon a water maker, which is made of parts, which we may have to source when it breaks down. And so in that respect, it's a kind of pseudo living yes. off, off It's grid. good. Let's call ourselves self-sufficient. Let's call ourselves green. Let's call ourselves all of those buzzwords snowflakey words that people don't like but we are not off-grid we're not macho homesteading off-gridders I'm afraid we're self-sufficient yachties perhaps we should do a few more of these rants we've got a few we have got a few rants yeah. there's a few we're thinking of uh, because we've said it before sailing and boat ownership and cruising isn't all about just sailing to tropical <laughs> idyllic places there are a lot of things that uh, we should really get across to you if you're thinking of becoming a cruiser that you that you should bear in mind some of those things can be quite frustrating to deal with so maybe we'll do a few more brands yeah and if you've got any ideas at all of things you'd like us to rant about 
if it rings and chimes a bell with us we're happy to join in and let me know in the comments what your definition of off-grid is.